Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art, and I am going to read a little bit of our book, Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution, tonight. And we are on page 20 something, I can't quite read that, 4. And uh, the new subtitle is shockingly subtitled The SST, a quote, monstrous abortion, unquote. Interesting that he'd use that word, isn't it? That's kind of a taboo word to use these days. Anyways, where Leonardo da Vinci failed to emulate the bird, modern science technology has given man those long-sought wings and the assurance that he can ev fly ever faster in even larger boxcars. Why? Because it must be good for something or someone, he is told. The economy is will be stimulated. Jobs performing unnecessary tasks will be available, and the national pride will be assaged. So now man enters the era of the supersonic transport, a device so unacceptable as to create an unbearable noise pollution. But have no fear. We have havoc science technology. What havoc science technology hath brought by determined effort and abundant infusion of tax dollars from those who will never benefit from such monstrous abortions as the SST, scientific research will assuredly find solutions to extricate us. The undying confidence of technology's ability to do the multitude of rapacious insults to man and his environment so freely and efficiently beyond, if so efficiently created is beyond belief, so arrogant has it steadily become. I'm going to read that sentence again. The undying confidence in technology's ability to undo the multitude of rapacious insults to man and his environment so freely and efficiently created is beyond belief. So arrogant has it steadily become. Uh-huh. We're living it right now, baby. In the field of atomic energy, some ultimate examples are available. Speaking of the future production of nuclear electric power, Dr. Arthur Upton, a pathologist at Oak Ridge National Lab Laboratory, tells us that as a byproduct of nuclear reactors for production for such power, we shall have billions of curies of, uh, of accumulated radioactivity to dispose of by the year 2000. Holy fuck -a At the outset, let us state that we have a very high regard for Dr. Upton and his scientific work. We question whether he has adequately considered the implications of his statements. <laughs> no shit, Sherlock. Dr. Upton tells us that information on disposal, on disposal of radioactive waste is limited. Ding, ding, ding. Let's read that again. Dr. Upton tells us that information on disposal of radioactive waste is limited. Hence, he states, the problem of disposing of such waste will assume increasing proportions with the development of nuclear power in the next several decades, since this will require the disposal of many more tons of radioactive waste than are now being disposed of annually. Wow. And listen to Dr. Upton carefully as he tells us that, quote, the methods envisioned for disposal call for permanent storage as part of the waste on land or underground and discharge of the remainder into the atmosphere and into rivers and oceans, unquote. Fuck me. That's where we're at right now. These motherfuckers have got to stop. The rape of our atmosphere, and back to him, <laughs> the rape of our atmosphere and land, our rivers and oceans by radioactive pollution forever is not even questioned at all by Dr. Upton. Motherfucker. Dr. Upton does not ask himself or us whether we are rational human beings to commit this obscene act against man and earth. 
He simply accepts it. Uh-huh. What have I been talking about? He simply accepts it. For who shall question the decision to go ahead with nuclear power generation accompanied by this outrageous waste disposal plan? Science technology has so ordained. The cult has spoken. We come to understand Dr. Upton's view of solutions in his following statements. Quote, Although present methods for disposal of radioactive waste appear to be satisfactory to meeting existing needs. If closely controlled, the effects of discharging greatly increased amounts of radioactivity into the environment cannot be predicted without more information on the behavior of fission products in the biosphere and about the effects of fission products on man and his ecosystem." Unquote. Wow. Dr. Upton accepts the unacceptable disposal plan and hopes human beings and the ecosystem supporting them will somehow muddle through if we get more information. Not a single suggestion that maybe we should use our brains to avoid this calamity. This is where I start cussing, folks. And in the best tradition of the science technology cult of self-worship, he goes on as follows. The disposal of increased quantities of radioactive waste will thus call for additional research, as well as further coordination and refinement in environmental monitoring. These questions, undeniably, will constitute a growing challenge. However, the comparative study, the comparative safety, listen to this, the comparative safety of the atomic energy industry to date encourages hope that the challenge can be met successfully if the necessary planning and research receive attention and support they deserve. Cha-ching! Fuck you! Unquote. The unbelieving reader should be reminded that Dr. Upton has been responsible for excellent research, scientific researches on radiation induction of cancer, and his motives are undoubtedly the best. Such are the pernicious and pervasive effects of the science technology cult upon the practitioners that statements such as his are not only possible, they are commonplace. Yes, Catherine Higley, yes. Research, we see, will be necessary to learn to the third decimal place, an answer we should long ago have rejected as abhorrent. Indeed, we can learn this marvelous answer if we but devote ourselves to it. How can radioactive poisons become thoroughly spread into the biosphere, including man? We shall study in detail, even though we know only too well, in large measure, through Dr. Upton's efforts, the deadly effects that necessarily will eventuate. All we must do is support research generously. For if we do, assures Dr. Upton, we can, quote, hope, unquote, that, technology, that science technology will yet bring us out one of the greatest morasses it plans to create. I read that wrong. Assures Dr. Upton, we can hope that science technology will yet bring us out of the great morass it plans to create. And thus we may arrive at the miraculous triumph of science-developed anti-pollution in the valiant attempt to keep pace with atomic technology's murderously efficient rate of creation of irreversible pollution. Written in 1970. Oh my God. Do not prevent the pollution itself. That might offend the almighty technology itself. Instead, we are asked to study 
the pollution, where it goes, and how it kills life on earth. By dint of dollar and devotion, we shall overcome. Dr. Upton is not alone among those who accept nuclear pollution without question. Holy fuck me, man. I want to read that again. This is where we're at. By dint of dollar and devotion, we shall overcome. Wow, that's their, that's their fucking phrase. We repeatedly hear from atomic energy disciples after the pollution of rivers, streams, and lakes that they have thereby created, quote, living laboratories for the study of radioactive effects upon living things. How extremely thoughtful and generous. And this is the problem of the irreversible arrogance of science and technology. Once heralded as a possible deliverer of mankind from the bondage of want of hunger, disease, and lack of shelter, and as a harbinger of a good life, it has long ceased to prove itself operating in society's behalf. It operates by its own rules, with allegiance to no human values. What science and technology has done is to make itself the goal, the objective, more, bigger, better. It can do no wrong. And if, by chance, it has, assuredly, its unequaled brilliant efforts always thoroughly supported by the labor and taxes of others can extricate us from the disaster once more. Oh my God. I'm going to stop you guys. I don't know. I can't see the time. I have no idea. Let me put my glasses on. I guess it's 12 minutes. Maybe I could keep going, but this, maybe I'll read the next subtitle. How about that? It's only 12 minutes. I think I can do that. So where the next subtitle is called Neutrality, Not Always the Same Responsibility. Here, let me move my chair up. I just realized I'm like halfway down that stupid thing. Okay, there we go. Okay. Such is the dynamic of this cult of worship of science, tech, science technology. And it sings itself praises of objectivity, adherence to truth, and its ethical neutrality in the matters of men. It knows no international boundaries and can thereby reveal to men, to men of all countries the laws of science by which we can, they can retreat from responsible behavior to themselves and to others. Wow. That's exactly what's happened. Boy, was he clear on this. These guys were right. And such is the self-aggrandizing power of, of the dynamic that it brooks no questioning. And it tolerates none while it speaks of its role in preserving and extending civilization. And the second danger, that the scientists and technologies who come to worship themselves as idols... What effect does this have upon their social responsibility? This is, a wor this is worthy of examination. Not only does science technology imagine itself omnipotent, so too dream its practitioners. Dreams of omnipotence inevitably breed a second evil, self-righteousness. And under this cloak can unfold the behavior of men governed by a dynamic of irresponsibility par excellence. Professor George Wald, he's a professor of biology at Harvard University and Nobel Laureate in Medicine, 1967, commented, in answer to those who reassuringly said nuclear weapons were just, quote, a matter of life, that, quote, these are not just, these are not facts of life. They are facts of death, unquote. How correct he is. It is such acceptance 
without a profound soul search that is the hallmark of the perversion of or the failure to understand human values and obligations and which leads to the deep immorality of the practitioners of science and technology. Not a planned immorality. Indeed, a self-righteousness leads them to express their horror that anyone would be so uncouth as to even raise questions of their, of their motives. We are not questioning their motives as evil. Rather, we are questioning the very absence of motivation to truly moral behavior. A behavior that implies a deep reflection upon the implications of one's actions. And I think I will stop there. We're on uh, the new subtitle. The next one's going to be called The Arrogant Self-Esteem of Scientists. And we're on page 208. So, wow, wow, wow. Huh, you guys? Chernobyl's a burning. I hear a poem coming. Chernobyl's a burning. Anyways, this is some heavy shit. Put your courage feet on, man. I got mine on. Can you tell? <laughs> I don't ever take my shoes off. <laughs> so put your courage feet on. And um, you know what? I think this makes me feel good. I'm not. This makes me feel stronger knowing that we have a path and we know the reality. Think good thoughts. Ciao.